everyone. Welcome to our weekly Google today. Google Plus Hangout. Uh, very happy to be joined by the tournament host, Davis Love the Third. Davis, how's it going? Great. Very thanks excited for, to get this tournament started. Yeah, thanks for joining us. And uh, so you are the tournament host. So I guess we'll we'll start with the question: What exactly does that mean? So to behind the scenes, I, I hear you're having people over to your house. You're running parties. You're playing wiffle ball. What what is what does that mean for for the week here? It means that I haven't practiced a whole lot for this <laughs> tournament, <laughs> and it meant that I had to cook barbecue for um, a big group um, of Armagladry friends, sponsors, tournament staff, um, so they could watch the Georgia-Florida game and, and have a nice dinner to kick off the um, the week. And then it means that um, everybody's asking me for Toby Keith concert tickets <laughs> and, um, and little things like that. But it's uh, it's just busy, you know. I am. Um, my name's on it, but there's a whole team of our Davis Love Foundation staff and um, Sea Island staff and um, agronomy staff and tour staff that are all working hard, and they're the ones that make it all happen. So I'm just uh, I'm just trying to get get to Thursday and tee off on time. Well, that's uh, that's kind of the other thing is you know there's still a golf tournament aspect to this, and you know obviously you've said earlier in the year you're you're ready to to keep being competitive uh, out here on the tour. So I mean what what's how do you balance that i guess it's hard to balance you know it's it's a big undertaking uh, justin leonard scott replank and justin thomas and mike Holber are all staying at my house and <laughs> at dinner last night justin leonard said i just did a little one hour fundraiser spin class thing at home and raised some money for charity he goes i can't imagine being responsible for a bga tour event so it's kind of overwhelming i mean my wife and all her friends have been making um, table decorations and organizing our yard and our barn for <laughs> 300 people coming tonight for the Pro-Am draw party, so um, I'm not going to get a whole lot of sleep tonight before the Pro-Am, and it's just one thing after another, but in the end, we're giving money back to charity, mm -hmm. and the trickle-down effect of this event for our hometown to create jobs and to bring excitement to our area and exposure, and for me to be able to give back to a community that supported me so much, it's it's all worth it, and I'll be a little bit more relaxed in Cancun next week uh, playing, <laughs> um, playing down there than I will be here. Well, uh, I guess the other aspect is I think you finished fourth here last year. So do you have maybe have a handle now on on how to how to manage these things? Are you are you ready to contend this week? Well, it's our home course, and Jim Furyk and I started off the last round thinking that you know we were we were kind of going to battle it out for the win. But then uh, old Tommy Two Gloves uh, <laughs> had a great day on Sunday, and it seems like somebody on Sunday, Ben Crane, the year he won, just comes out of the blue and shoots a really low round. So. Uh, maybe I need to reposition myself and be about there four or five groups from the end. But, you know, it's our home course, and you would think Jonathan Bird or Zach Johnson or, or Matt Kuchar or one of us would play well um, here. But it's a lot of pressure playing at home, and it's a lot different. And, um, you know, we try too hard. I think I think both Jim and I, being, being locals and wanting to win here, um, put a little too much pressure on us last year. But mm -hmm. it's fun. I'm excited about it. The golf course is in fabulous shape, and I've gotten – I was here. This is the first time I've actually been around the week before the tournament in the four years that we've had it. So it's uh, – I'm a little bit more prepared as far as um, knowing what's going on out on the golf course and, and being ready to play. Well, as somebody who plays the course as much as you do, what can you tell us as far as, you know, what, what kind of game does it favor? What should we be looking for? What are kind of some of the, the more exciting holes to be watching for fans, that kind of thing? Well, anybody that's anywhere near the coast of Georgia or North Florida right now knows that the wind needs to quit blowing because it's yeah, been no howling uh, it's tough, for about tough two drive days. up here this morning. I know. I can't yeah, imagine playing golf. I'm looking out the window of the media center. Trees are still bent over. So, um, well, it's it's a it's a seaside, link side kind of course in the fact that if the wind does blow, um, you're going to really feel it all day. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of water. There's a lot of hitting it over the the rivers and the creeks and the marsh are playing alongside the marsh, so it can be very tricky if the wind blows. If it doesn't blow, um, you know, pretty straightforward golf course. It's pretty fair. You hit the ball on the fairway, you get it on the green, then it's all about how many putts you make. The greens are kind of crowned, uh, old style, up in the air a little bit. Um, it's it's not a hard golf course until you get it set up for a tournament, and the mm -hmm. greens can be pretty fast and pretty tricky. So I think we've had about 13 or 14 unders one every year, which is not that low on the PGA Tour. That's right. without wind. If the wind blows, I think scores will, will be even higher. But um, it's it's typical of any any tour event. If you hit the ball in the fairway and you putt well, um, you're going to shoot a low score. Your Webb Simpson was 
at the top of greens and regulation and the top in putting at Vegas, and he ran away with it. So that's kind of the secret. Is it's funny how that combination hit it, hit it works. Good and putt good and <laughs> that works. That works really well any week, but this week you do not want to be in the rough. Obviously, a lot of water. Can't hit it in the water. So the guy that stays away from big numbers and gives himself a lot of birdie opportunities will do well. Well, we have been uh, asking for fan questions the last couple of days, so we're going to run you through a couple of those, and then we'll we'll let you get out of here. So, uh, the first one from from Facebook uh, is from Dian Chin. Uh, he said, "What was your luckiest shot that you've ever hit?" I like that question. Oh gosh, um, I've had a lot of good bounces, but um, one year at um, at Pebble Beach on um, the twelfth hole, the par three. Um, the pin is always back left on Sunday, and the fans are real close to the edge of the green. And I pulled it a little bit, and the wind got it a little bit, and it and it hit up there in the in the rough and kind of bounced off a fan and stayed there right by the edge of the green um, where I could putt it rather than going over the hill, down the hill. Um, that was a good lucky break. That was probably, it saved me at least a stroke, maybe two. And um, I'll always remember that. You know, I've, I've done some funny things and gotten some good bounces. Everybody does. But that's one that I clearly remember that, that <laughs> saved me two strokes and, and helped me win a golf tournament. I was going to say, that's that's when they talk about, you know, sometimes it's your week. Those are the kinds of things that seem like they happen. That's uh, right. Let's go to this one. Uh, Neil McGonigal, he said... Uh, I like this question too. He said, uh, "If you didn't really have a lot of time to warm up, we'll say ten minutes. What would you spend your ten minutes warming up on?" I would actually, at this stage of my life, almost 50 years old and, and being a little bit older, wiser, I would just stretch. Yeah. Um, I would not really worry about hitting balls because if you can get your your body a little bit loose, I watch you know Zach Johnson and. Jonathan Bird and Morgan Hoffman, a lot of these guys that are really um, concentrating on staying fit, they really spend a lot of time stretching and loosening up and less time hitting balls than you would think. Um, I would feel like if I was making some some swings and loose, I would be okay. Um, then if I had a few minutes, I would putt <laughs> you know, <laughs> while I'm running to the tee. Um, I think getting a feel for the greens and getting loose is more important than practicing hitting mm -hmm. golf balls. Well, you did say uh, you're going to turn 50 in April, I believe. Uh, what are your, your thoughts on the Champions Tour and splitting time and, and all that kind of thing? Well, I uh, sent Freddie a congratulations text when he won <laughs> last week yeah. and, uh, and told him that I, I knew I couldn't beat him, so I was going to stay <laughs> out here on the on the regular tour and hang out with Justin Thomas and Jordan Speed. <laughs> there you go, exactly. And, kids. and uh, I'm just going to hang out here and wait on Drew Love to get out here. He's got, he's got three or four, four more years uh, at University of Alabama. So, um, you know, I I must start this year. Obviously, this is my third event of the 2013-14 season. By the time I get to April, I'm going to have a lot of events in. Um, I'm going to kind of know where I am, but I want to chase FedEx Cup points. I want to chase, um, I want to get in the bigger tournaments. I haven't played in the Masters, uh, the U.S. Open enough um, recently. I want to get in those events, World Golf Championships, and, um, you know, there's there's Ryder Cup points uh, already. This, I can get sure. Ryder Cup points in my home <laughs> course this week. So um, I'm thinking about all those kind of things and not really focused on the Champions Tour, but... Um, Pebble Beach sounds pretty nice in October, and no doubt, Hawaii yeah. and Hawaii sounds pretty nice <laughs> in 2015. So uh, there will be some events that I'll want to play, but um, right now, today, I'm being a little bit cocky and saying, you know, I'm going to stay out here and, and play on this tour for a while. Well, you're kind of setting me up for all these questions. This is really nice because uh, David Blair on Facebook uh, was asking, what's the best advice you've given Drew? And like you said, your son uh, Drew Love is a young standout player at Alabama. So what, what have you kind of taught him or, or made sure that he takes away from your career? Well, he's a standout player there because he's taller than everybody else. <laughs> but um, he's uh, how, tall, how tall is he? He's amazing. He's, I don't know. He, you got to measure him every every month because he gets yeah. bigger and bigger. I said, please don't grow any. <laughs> he was at the at Alabama basketball game last night. They might have been trying to drag him <laughs> on the sure. bench. Yeah, he's getting so big. But um, you know, they've got you know Trey Mullinax that plays for Alabama is a big big guy, and um, they they just seems like golfers are just getting bigger and bigger, yeah. stronger, better athletes. But, uh, you know, my advice to him, the best advice I give him is go ask Uncle Mark um, for a lesson because <laughs> you know, he's yeah. a great teacher and, and I'm going to mess you up. But <laughs> I try to give him advice how to play, you know, little things that he can do and keeping him organized and um, pointing him to the right people. Dr. Bob Rotella, you go ask Rotella how to do it. You know, I can tell you what I do, but Dr. Rotella can teach you what he taught me. Mm -hmm. um, I push him in the right direction. I've learned enough to know that I'm not a golf teacher. I can tell you what's broken, but I don't know how to fix it. Um, 
um, I was watching my nephew hit balls a couple days ago, and I'm like, something looks funny with his grip. And I told him something to do in his swing, and my brother came out and just fixed his grip in five minutes because he sees how what's wrong and how to fix it. Mm -hmm. So I just try to push Drew along and urge him and try to try to outdrive him, um, try to motivate him to to get to be a better player on the golf course, strategy wise and things like that. And then, um, you know, he's with great coaches at Alabama, and my brother's helping him with his swing. So smartest thing for me to do. Stay, stay out of the way. <laughs> stay out of the way. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get one more in here, and we'll we'll let you get out. You were uh, obviously one of the longest players on tour, and you came out still a long player at 49. So, uh, Joe Smith wants to know. Uh, he says your swing seems so smooth and effortless. Let your yet you're incredibly long off the tee. Uh, what's your biggest key to distance? Well, I think the key to distance is, um, you know, everybody said we mentioned Fred Couples earlier. Everybody says, well, Freddie makes it look so easy. <laughs> He's got a beautiful golf swing with good rhythm and timing. It's just like when you watch Wayne Gretzky skate, Michael Jordan run the floor, they make it look easy. Why? Because they're really, really good at it. They're efficient. Their form is good. Like Steve Nash, form shooting practice makes him, when he's in the game, it looks easy. Mm -hmm. It looks simple. The ball comes off really pretty every time, right? Well, Freddie Couple's swing looks good because everything's working together. It's got great timing and great balance, so it makes it look simple. And that's the that's the key is if your technique is good, your fundamentals are sound, and then you have good rhythm and balance and timing, that's where the power comes from. Everything's working together. You can't just say, well, I'm going to hit it with my arms or I'm going to hit it with my, my hips. Everything has to be tied together. And I'm still getting lessons from Jack Lumpkin where he's saying, all right, the club has to stay in front of your hands and you have to turn through it. Everything turned through together. Quit hitting it with your flipping at it with your with your hands and I'm like 40 years into this practice and golf thing and I still make the same mistakes so if you can make everything work together that's where you're going to get the max club head speed well Davis thank you so much for joining us I know you're a busy guy we'll let you get out of here what's uh, on tap for the rest of the day you got some wiffle ball coming up is that right I um I unfortunately I don't get to go to the wiffle oh, ball man. Game. Um, they know I'll get hurt but um <laughs> we have 300 people coming to our house tonight for the yeah. prime draw party and oh so you're um, yeah. I've got a, a lot of, I need to go practice a little bit too, so um, got a lot going on, but it's fun, and um, like uh, once Wednesday, the Pro-Am's over, then we're then we're into inside the ropes and mm -hmm. playing mode, and um, it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. We Looks like we got a beautiful weather weekend, so yeah. excited about it. Well, best of luck this week. Thanks again for joining us. All right. Thank you. All righty. See ya. See ya.